What's going on? This is Jake with Exodus. On this week's episode of Whitetail Cribs, we are going to Oklahoma once again to visit with Justin Smith. Justin has some really cool deer and something we haven't seen yet. It is an ambulance that has been converted to a meat wagon. So you get to check out all that in this episode. If you guys enjoy it, hit the like button and subscribe. Let's go. How's it going? Come on in, guys. I'm Justin Smith. Welcome to Oklahoma. You guys want to come see some deer this one right here in the hallway is the one that started it all for me it was on the place here it was a muzzleloader hunt and i kept hearing something coming and he comes right right down the fence just like he's supposed to and had the old side lock muzzleloader and i shot him at 10 yards and of course the smoke went everywhere and i thought all right and the smoke's clearing i thought Man, he's gonna be laying there dead and he's still walking so I reload, reload, get ready to shoot him again, he falls over. That was in 1998. The next one I got was this one right here. Opening day rifle season, 1999, 40 mile an hour wind. My buddy had killed a seven point and we were pretty excited about that because back in those days there just wasn't any big deer around and lots of does. And we were getting ready to go walk out this patch of brush and my dad, you know, he says, you guys are wasting your time, it's way too windy. It took me 15 minutes to walk back there and I had a buck and a doe. So I called him get my dad and say, hey, will you drive back here and help me with this deer? You guys shoot a deer? I said, yeah, I got two, so. He couldn't believe that. And this little guy here, I shot him with a muzzleloader. I think it was 2004. I shot him from the ground. I, I sat between four big trees and that was a fun, fun deal. And then this one, this one actually came off of this place. And that was the biggest bow kill I'd had to date. Of course, they're not big by today's standards, but you know, I was very proud of them. Then we go to this one. He was, well, up, up until then, that was the biggest one I'd killed with my bow. I shot him in 2006. The same year, I shot this one with a rifle. The day before rifle season, they were chasing does pretty hard. And I was walking to my tree stand day before rifle would had my bow he's bedded up with a doe it took me probably an hour and a half but i got within 50 yards of him walking just taking a step just every five minutes i'd take a step i got 50 yards from him i almost got him with my bow but i, I don't think they busted me he just got up and left and i was pretty down in the dumps about that i get up in my tree the next morning rifle season here he comes it's 15 yards i wish i'd have had my bow but up until then that was the best one I'd ever killed. This one was a regular around the place. I know he's not very big, but he's unique. I killed him with a rifle. He's a big old deer. If you count all the little points he's got, he's got 15 points. I was glad to have him too. He was, he was weird. And then we'll go over here to this wall. This was the first Pope and Young deer I'd ever killed. He'd come off this place. I shot him, uh, I think it's 32 yards. I killed him with my bow. And you can see how this deer's hair is a lot shorter than the other ones. I got him the second day of October. He grossed, he grossed 131 and 08s and netted 128 and 08. So I was pretty excited with him. And then I got, decided I'd go to Kansas and hunt. And then this one kind of run it for me. Now they're, none of them are big enough anymore after killing this one. And he's a 10 point. He scored 151. He grossed 153 and two eights, netted 151, zero eight, so he didn't have much deductions. If that deer would have had some eye guards, he would have been, he'd have scored a lot better. But I was sitting up there in southeast Kansas on a creek bank, and it was it was straight up and down like this. And I'd sit there, I hadn't seen much, and it was an either sex tag, and here come this doe right underneath me. And I thought about shooting that doe and going home, because I'd had enough. She's sitting there eating acorns, and she stops and looks, and somehow this buck made it up that straight up and down creek bank without me even knowing he was there. He turned broadside and I shot him and he runs straight at the tree. He actually got blood on my ladder going up and I watched him. Of course, that was the biggest deer I'd ever killed in my life and he made it about 100 yards. But right after I shot that deer, there was an eight point that was probably the same size. 
come right by. We're that one. Same trail. Went up there and checked that doe. And I had to sit there and take that, which I would have been happy with him too because, like I said, that's, that's still the biggest one I've ever killed. And then this deer here, I went to work for Ketchum Public Works eight years ago, and they had 20 acres up north of town that uh, they owned to, they just stored pipe up there. And I asked my boss, I said, uh, be careful if I do any deer hunting up there. He said, yeah, go ahead. And the uh, first day, walking out, going to where I'd scouted out and put my stand, there was a two track road, just a trail going through this tall grass. I look up and this buck's walking across the road. I shot him and my taxidermist that mounted him for me, he uh, said, you have any idea how old this deer was? I said, I have no idea, but you can see the the cape, it's pretty rough. He really wanted to put a different cape on him. And I said, no, nah, that's how he was. Let's let's do him that way. And he pulled teeth on that deer. He's eight and a half years old. So well, that deer was probably a lot bigger once upon a time. I don't know. And then after that, we had a little 80 acre lease up northeast of here, up towards the Kansas line. And my wife went with me and I really wanted her to kill this deer because he was headed right to her. And I texted her, I said, you see that deer? No, she didn't see this deer. And I went several years without rifle hunting. I just wanted to strictly bow hunt. And I uh, about forgot how much fun rifle hunting was. So I shot that deer 300 yards. And I really thought he was a lot bigger than he was. But a buddy of mine, uh, we went in on a lease up there, southeast Kansas. And we had some pictures of some monsters. There was three guys and then us in on this lease. And they all bow hunted. And we had to rifle hunt. The three guys, I think they went the first week in November, and they were done in a day and a half. And they all got 180, 160, and then another really nice eight point. So I couldn't sleep the day before opening day rifle when we got up there. And I sat in a blind, and I didn't see anything. I sat in a stand that evening, and I, I seen this deer. I could tell he was a pretty nice deer, but it wasn't really what I wanted to go up there and get. Then the next, next morning, here he comes again. I passed him again. It was the fourth or fifth morning. He come busting through the brush, and my buddy was starting to get homesick, I think. So I shot him, but I think I might have got the big eye just a little bit. And that, then that happens to me, too. I was happy to have him. I hear we got some sheds and stuff that we found over the years. All these old sawed-off racks here was hanging up in my grandpa's garage before he died. And uh, he's kind of the one that really got me into hunting. My dad took me, but my grandpa, he, he always went. My dad took me good and long enough to... Get me big enough where I go by myself and he quit going. But here's here's my wife's first deer. That's not a high scoring deer, but that is a that's a heck of a first buck. He's got stuff everywhere back here. I don't know if that counts as a drop time, but I still haven't killed one with a drop time. We do a lot of camping when we go down there hunting. We usually stay for a weekend or a week if we have the vacation time. And I know you guys are dying to see the camper we got out here. So come see it now. Yeah, the group of guys that we go with, they're, they're all pretty handy. And uh, I joined the fire department uh, about 16 years ago. I had a fire at my house and was burning the trash in a trash barrel and it uh, seemed to be doing just fine. And I went in there, made me a sandwich and come back out and I checked my fire and it's all the way down the hill here. And I thought, oh no. So, but I was too proud to call the fire department. I had two five gallon buckets in a pond and I did that for an hour and a half till I about had a heart attack. So I called 911 and they come out and put it out. And I said, man, what's this gonna cost? And I think it was $350 or $500 or, or I could join. So I joined the fire department. I didn't know it was gonna be a life sentence, but we had this old ambulance down below and every time we went to use it, something was wrong with it. So I talked them into selling it to me and it is 85 GMC, and it had a 454 in it, and my, my buddy had a Nova. So we went together and bought this ambulance for next to nothing. And he put the motor in his Nova. I take the cab and the front end and everything off, and I just welded the tongue back on there and put a high lift jack, and this thing's got all the storage you could ever ask for. Just a little bit of everything in there, just a rope, and. I don't know what's in here actually, but I reinforced the back bumper on it a little bit, put some jacks. Some of the places we go are 
pretty remote so you can't really get a big camper in there and i put some bunk beds in it one stays up there and one goes in the floor and you know you can throw a couple totes of hunting gear you get a little generator and a rinse kit and your bow i mean what else what else you need and as you can see i like to eat so when we go to deer camp we eat good it's got all kinds of you can put all your groceries and stuff up here where the ivs and all that stuff went neck collars you can put all your bowls and cast iron skillets and stuff in there and i made this i made it this where you can take this uh couple pins you can pull and this lifts off and you can put your ramps and drive your four-wheeler up on there take it with you so yeah it's kind of a work in progress but we're gonna put a paint job on it and I got a bunch of stickers it's gonna say the meat wagon on there because that's what everybody calls ambulances so but I guess that's it I Hope you guys enjoyed that and everybody get a laugh out of the meat wagon because we sure do.